Hey, what's up? This is Reed. If you're getting into the smart home space, you may be wondering about hubs. And I'm gonna show you some roadblocks that can be solved by having a hub to help you decide if you actually need one. I'll also share some tips on how to automate efficiently. So even if you already have a hub, then this video still might help you out. As I showed you in my previous video, there are some pretty cool things you can do on a budget without a hub, but you may run into a few roadblocks if you don't have a hub. That includes being able to use more advanced automations like multiple if triggers, as well as automations based on who is at the house. For example, if the TV's on, it's at night, and someone rings the doorbell, then you can have your TV automatically pause or mute, and the lights automatically turn up in brightness. And if you don't have a hub, you probably can't do this. I'm sorry. In my weakened condition, I can't come to the door right now. It's also difficult to manage a large amount of devices and automations without a hub. I'll show you how easy it is to do these things with a hub, and there's some things you might not have even thought of, like if you're having guests come over, being able to temporarily disable a bunch of automations with the press of a button. In the smart home space, there's many things people might call a hub. But for this video, I'm referring to things like SmartThings, Hubitat, Home Assistant, etc. It's a device that can connect a wide range of smart devices using Wi-Fi, Z-Wave, and Zigbee. A hub helps smart devices work together, and it does this by providing a central location to control, organize, and automate your smart devices. I'll be using SmartThings for this video because that's what I primarily use. If you only have a few routines in your voice assistant app, it's not too difficult to manage. However, if you start getting a lot of routines or automations, it can be time consuming to maintain. There's a more efficient way and in smart things it's called scenes. You can change lights, lock doors, change the thermostat and much more all at once. The benefit of using scenes is that you can set up everyday tasks once, especially lighting and use it over and over again. You can trigger a scene by pressing a button in the app, use a scene in an automation or with your voice, then if you ever have to make a change, like change the lighting brightness, you can just update the scene and you don't have to update it anywhere else. In software development, it's common practice to reuse code. So this is kind of similar for home automation. For example, if I wanted to create a Google Assistant routine that would play relaxing music and dim the lights, then I would create a scene in SmartThings for the lights and then create a routine with an action that uses that scene and then another action to play music. If I have multiple routines and automations using that same scene and then I add another smart bulb to my office, all I have to do is add that smart bulb to that one scene and then it updates all the routines and automations automatically and that saves a lot of time and that can add up pretty quickly. While you can import the scenes into the voice assistant apps, you cannot create scenes in those voice assistant apps which is pretty surprising. That's why having a hub is really helpful. One of people's fears with home automation is that it will be annoying and it will make the family angry. And I'm sure my wife and kids would tell you that that's probably a valid concern and it shouldn't be overlooked. A hub provides the tools so you can quickly tweak an automation so it can fit in seamlessly with your family's day-to-day -day lives. One of those things is multiple if conditions to trigger an automation. And this is something Alexa routines and if this and that cannot do. To show you how useful this is, I'll go back to the example that I mentioned at the beginning. I'll show you how to temporarily disable a bunch of automations if guests were coming over. First, you would need to add a virtual switch. And I'll link down below on how to add them and more info on virtual switches. But basically, it's a variable that's stored on the hub and you can toggle it on or off. Now if you have an automation that dims the lights in the evening and you don't want that to run because you want the lights to stay on while your guests are over, then you would add another if condition and you would say if that virtual switch is on, then don't run the automation. And you would add this to all the other automations that you temporarily want to skip. Then you can just manually turn on the virtual switch when your guests come over and you can set a timer to automatically turn off the virtual switch later so you don't forget. This little tip might save your marriage. You never know. If you don't have a hub and you try to temporarily disable all the automations yourself for a scenario like this, it would take way longer and it may lead you down a dark path of not wanting automations in your house anymore. With a hub, you can use your phone's location as a presence sensor in your automations. 
That way you can fine tune your automations to only run if certain people are home or away. As you can see, there are a lot of options to customize automations to however you want, but none of this is possible or it's very difficult to do if you don't have a hub. Home automation does not have to be overwhelming. You can start simple and add to it as you go, but having a hub can help everything work together and you can customize it to fit your needs. Hopefully this video was helpful and if it was, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. If you feel like you have too many hubs, well, now you can buy a hub that will manage all of your hubs. It's called the Hubmaster 5000. What's one more hub anyways?